30th meeting of the Rural Affairs, Islands and Natural Environment Committee in 2022. Um, before we begin, can I remind all those members using electronic devices to switch them to silent? Our first item of business is an evidence session with the Scottish Government Bill Team on Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill. Uh, and I welcome the following Scottish Government officials to the meeting. We have Hugh Dignan, Head of Wildlife and Flood Management Unit. We've got Leah Fitzgerald, the, the Bill Team Leader. Rebecca Grenan, the Deputy Bill Team Leader. And Amy Hogarth, Solicitor. Um, We've got about 60 minutes this morning to, to ask various questions, uh, and I'll kick off. Can I, can I ask, uh, I'll probably start with Hugh, can you tell me what you understand the meaning uh, of rough shooting? Uh, yes, uh, Kamina, um, I guess the first thing to say is, I, mean, I think it's a fairly broad term, that it encompasses quite a lot of different sorts of shooting. But I suppose you could characterise it as being informal in its nature compared to the sort of more formal types of shooting like driven shooting with driven grouse or driven pheasant shooting. Um, I think it's, uh, as far as you know, I, I'm aware, and I'm, I have to say I'm, I'm not a shooter, but I mean, I've, I know people who are and I've looked at it on um, YouTube videos and I've talked to, to, to people about it and so on, but it, it seems to me that it's, it's typically characterised by there being a, one person or a group of people who are going to go shooting on land that they own or land that they have permission to shoot over. Quite often a farmer might give people permission to shoot over land. And the sort of species they might be after would be sort of one for the pot type species. It could be a range of, uh, of birds from pheasants, partridge, snipe, um, woodcock, whatever, through to mammals, hares in season, rabbits uh, and the occasional fox, I suppose, if they see a fox, although I don't think that's usually the purpose of going rough shooting. So that it seems that a fairly typical arrangement might be that if there were more than one person involved in the shooting, that they would arrange themselves in a line across the ground that they were going to cover, and they would advance across that ground with uh, one or two dogs, typically, with each person having a dog or dogs in front of them, and they would be controlling, directing those dogs, directing them to, to find and to flush uh, quarry species. And those species, when they were flushed, would typically either fly off or bolt off, providing an opportunity for the shooter to shoot the quarry species, and then the dog would be directed to retrieve the species back to the shooter. So I think that's I would guess fairly common, but it's not always like that. There are other arrangements we're aware of as well, but I guess that would be a sort of fairly typical sort of rough shoot. So, so with that, there, there would be no intention really for a, for a dog to chase a rabbit or a hare or a pheasant. It, it's all about flushing with the purpose of a rough shoot to, to actually to shoot rather than have the dogs have any play in other part than flushing. Yes. So, so on that basis, is this was there any intention within this bill to uh, ultimately or effectively ban or prevent rough shooting as it's, as you've described? No, there was no intention to do that at all. I mean, the bill seeks to regulate the use of dogs to flush mammals. So, I guess where that is happening as a part of rough shooting then that would fall within the provisions of the bill. Okay. But it's not, a, a, not, a, it's not the primary purpose of the bill to regulate rough shooting. No. Okay, so, so would you describe it as an unintended consequence of the legislation that it would have an impact on rough shooting? I'm not sure unintended consequences is exactly the right phrase, because if, if someone's version of rough shooting involved using a number of dogs more than two to flush a mammal, then the intention of the bill is that that would be within the scope of the bill. So, but, but was your understanding of a rush of shooting um, complete enough to allow you to, to make, uh, you know, to understand exactly what the implications of the two dog limit would be on rough shooting? Or is, is that something that's developed since the stage one evidence? Is your understanding of rough shooting now better than what it was initially? I think it's fair to say that we've looked more closely at it and we have considered 
how the provisions of the bill would apply to what actually happens on the ground in most rough shoots as we understand them. Okay, thank you. Rachel Hamilton. Oh, it's, thank you very much. Uh, it's just to be clear, um, Mr Dignan, on what basis did you form your idea of what a rough shoot is? Did you go on one? Did you seek uh, witnesses? Did you watch it on YouTube? Google it? Yes, um, all of those things. I have been on rough shoots before. I have friends who rough shoot. I looked it on YouTube. I talk with stakeholders. So, yeah. And can I just confirm that it wasn't your intention to restrict rough shooting through the scope of the bill? No, as, as I explained to the, the convener, the intention is to regulate the use of dogs uh, being used to, to hunt mammals to ensure that they're not allowed to chase and kill mammals and that the sort of ancillary activities around searching and flushing are within the terms of the bill. So to the extent that rough shooting uses those activities, then it is it falls within the scope of the bill. But it was the intention is primarily, as, as you know, is, is to prevent packs of dogs being used to chase and kill wild mammals. When you looked into um, what rough shooting was, or formed your understanding and shared it with your bill team, did you um, get information to, to say that dogs that go out on a rough shoot day are not domestic dogs and that they are working dogs that are under control by the person that takes them out? Well, I mean, I understand that there's primarily gun dogs who are used, but I don't suppose it's exclusively gun dogs. That, that there may be a variety of dog species that are used, but as I understand, it's primarily spaniels, labradors are used, uh, and yes, they're under control of their owners usually. Thank you. Can I just finally on that topic? It's reassuring to, to, to know that you, you did your research into um, the, the rough shoot, but can I ask, did you do that research prior to the bill being introduced, or did you do it in, on the, the back of concerns that were raised by the responses that you and the Cabinet Secretary gave the committee uh, and evidence during the stage one proceedings? Uh, I think, you know, I, I was reasonably, reasonably familiar before, but we certainly went back and looked more closely at the issue following the, the concerns that were raised. Okay, thank you. Ariane Burgess. Thanks, Convener. I'd like to ask about the rationale of her taking a different approach to the number of dogs when it comes to rough shooting compared to other types of hunting with dogs. If the rationale is to improve workability, this seems unnecessary according to the Wild, Anim uh, Wild Animal Welfare Commission. I'd like to hear your response to the Welfare Commission statement that Section 62C of the bill as drafted takes a proportionate approach in requiring the person to take reasonable steps to ensure that a dog does not join with others to form a pack. It should be possible for anyone in this situation to demonstrate that such steps had been taken. A genuinely accidental or unintended situation is unlikely to be viewed as an offence. <clears throat> that sounds to me like that section of the bill is workable, but I would welcome your opinion on that. Well, I think uh, the first thing I'd like to say on that is we're not making an exception or changing the provisions of the bill in any way to accommodate rough shooting in particular. The position that we have outlined applies to any activity under the bill. So it's what we're saying is that if the activity involves no more than two dogs and it's for one of the purposes in the bill and that those dogs aren't allowed to join up with any other dogs to form a pack, then the activity is lawful under the bill. So that could be for the Section 6 uh, exception, or it could be for any of the others. And indeed, when we look at some of the environmental activities, a similar sort of thinking would clearly apply. That if, if people were using a number of dogs in a project, as long as they were, the, the activity of each dog was separate from others and they weren't joining up to form a pack, then it would be lawful under the bill. So there's no particular exception being made here for rough shooting. It is just the application of the bill provisions. Thank you. Alistair Allen. Um, thank you, Convener. And really just um, on the back of that, um, I wonder if you could take us through the issues that were considered um, in reaching an approach where there was a different number of dogs considered for rough shooting from other 
types of shooting, if, if that's a correct reading of things. So, um, was the issue of the safety of the wild mammal the issue that you were considering primarily when you considered this this area of the bill? Well, I, I, I think um, as I was perhaps I've not really been successful in getting this across, but we, we're not changing the number of dogs for rough shooting. It's the same provisions apply for rough shooting as apply for any of the other exceptions. Thank you. Peter Swishart. Oh, beg your pardon, hey, Mercedes. Thank you. Um, yeah, just a follow-up question, I suppose, because I'm concerned that the, the Section 6 exemption in the bill, which includes rough shooting, is going to undermine the wider <clears throat> purpose of the bill, because essentially it's it's allowing for more than two dogs to be present during an activity which involves flushing wild mammals, whereas that's not permissible for flushing foxes. And it, the rationale seems to hang on this idea that um, on a rubber shoot, um, groups of more than two dogs can be prevented from forming a pack. And I just would be interested to hear a bit more about the evidence base for why that's possible in a rough shooting circumstance, but not when supposedly flushing foxes. Um, why in one instance is it believed that the level of control over dogs will prevent them from forming a pack and losing control and potentially killing the animal, whereas on a rough shoot, it's, uh, on a, when, when foxes are involved, it's, the claim is that you know it's it's not possible to control them, prevent a pack forming. From you know to to an outsider, I haven't been on a shoot. Um, it seems that you know foxes and rabbits, uh, other mammals, they're wild mammals. I, I just am not clear on the on the distinction and the rationale behind behind this exemption. Well, uh, as I say, there isn't a specific exemption for rough shooting. So if someone was to be flushing a fox with two dogs and someone separated from them was also flushing a fox with two dogs, that there would be the same situation as we're talking about with rough shooting. However, if there is one person in charge of a number of dogs and the purpose of that num number of dogs is for those dogs to work together as a unit to flush a fox, then that is clearly a different situation. So it's, it's really, it, it, uh, it, it, it's, it's about the activity and the activity is a person using dogs to flush a wild mammal. So if a person is using one or two dogs to flush a wild mammal, that, provided it's for one of the exceptions in the bill, that, that's OK. I expect we'll come on to this in more detail in the, later on when we discuss enforcement, but it sounds as if you're saying as long as there are enough humans present to have plausible deniability, we could continue to see... Um, packs of dogs flushing foxes, if, if people can say, well, each of us, we're all here separately with our one or two dogs. Can well, you see I mean, how that might... Uh, I, uh, I suppose I would take issue with plausible deniability. I mean, if, if someone is operating a pack of dogs, it's clearly that's what's happening. Mm. I, think there, I think there is, in practice, a difference between what happens where people have one or two dogs which are working under the control of one person seeking to provide quarry for that one person to shoot rather than where a group of dogs are being used for a specific purpose of drawing uh, some woodland, for example, with the example of the intention of flushing a fox from it. Um, can I just clarify on that point? Did the government give any consideration to the point which Mercedes has uh, just brought up? The difference between people working with two dogs in a rough shoot situation is uh, the fact that those two dogs will always be under control of the individual person who is either walking up or flushing, and they will not form a pack on the basis that they're under control by one individual, and the types of dogs are not pack hunting dogs in the first place. Did that have any consideration in your thinking? Well, I, I mean, I think that is the reality of it. Um, 
but the, the law isn't setting out to differentiate between different types of dogs. It's talking about the number of dogs that can be used by a person uh, or by a group of people who are all uh, responsible for uh, that group of dogs. Uh, and one of the conditions of the uh, all of these exceptions is, is that the dogs do not form a pack. So, I mean, I think it's, it's fairly easy to be reassured that the sort of dogs used in rough shooting will, will not form a pack, but that doesn't, that's not set out in the statute that it's a particular type of dog that must be involved. But it's certainly, yeah, we, we, we understand that, and that is, is part of the reassurance, I guess. So, so does that come back to intent, i.e. the intent is to flush, therefore you're using a particular type of dog? Now, I know that the type of dog is not included in the bill, but it comes down to intent. So if you were flushing with lurchers or with foxhounds, then intent would be to flush a particular type of animal. But if you're flushing in a game shooting situation, then there is better control on the basis of the fact that it's a rough shoot rather than what we would recognise as a normal hunt. Yes, I mean, I, I, th I think that, you know, as I say, it, that is the reality of it. And I'm, you know, it's not my job to do this, but I'm guessing it's the sort of thing that might be taken into, into account in evidence as to intent. OK, thank you. Could I just add, though, if the onus is still on the person, whether they're rough shooting, whether they're, they're deer stalking, whether they're you know, controlling stoats for environmental purposes, if they are operating um, in proximity to someone else who has also undertaken that activity, the onus is still on them to keep the dogs under control and to make sure that they don't form a pack. And the bill was um, you know, put in that way to... you know hopefully prevent people trying to, you know, claim that they accidentally on purpose turned up together um, and just so happened to all have, you know, two dogs and, and go off and do illegal hunting. So um, generally, yes, um, on the types of dogs used in rough shoots won't form a pack, but if they do form a pack, then it's, the individual needs to take action to, um, you know, separate them. Otherwise, they could um, end up, you know, being in contravention of the bill. Then we will come back to this in enforcement at a later point. Yes. Thank you. Okay, just in the back of it, <clears throat> Mr. Dignan, you suggest that rough shooting, you understand exactly what rough shooting is. We understand exactly what hunting with packs is. And you, you've said there was no intention to ban, effectively ban rough shooting. So why not have an exception for rough shooting if it's so clearly defined and it's all going to be okay once the bill's in place because people make assumptions? Why not just exempt rough shooting from the bill? Uh, well, I mean, I, primarily because the, the bill is, is about regulating the use of dogs, and we want to make sure that there are no loopholes in that. But so it, surely it, the, it, this, the reason we're here is because what is in the bill at the moment and the subsequent additional information or guidance that the, the Cabinet Secretary or the Minister gave us does create loopholes. And creating a, an exemption for rough shooting, if you see it so clearly defined in your head and everybody knows what it is and we know what a pack of dogs working would look like, why not just exempt it? Why would that create a loophole? Well, I think exempting it would create a loophole. So it would mean that anyone who said they were rough shooting would be able to say, well, they were not within the scope of the bill and there would be then the potential for uh, people to use that claim that they were rough shooting to be carrying out some other sort of activity. What, what other activity? Well, to be, for example, to be, to be aiming to, to use more than two dogs to flush mammals for the purpose of shooting. But, but you just said it was quite clear if dogs were hunting individually or as a, a pack, and that was the basis for people not to be prosecuted. So, yeah, but, but that, that is on the understanding that people, by and large, do not use more than two dogs. If people are using more than two dogs and say they're rough shooting, well, they are caught with the scope of the bill. Um, but but did, you, did you come across in your evidence anywhere where people were rough shooting and they had less than two dogs? Had less than two dogs? When they were rough shooting? Well, to be clear, I'm talking about where a person is using those dogs. So they may well be on a, in a, a group of shooters who may well have met up together and then set off, as I say, perhaps in a lion's field. They may well have one or two dogs each. 
So that may, if there were 10 people, it could be 10, 20 dogs, I guess. But what we're saying is, is that as long as those activities are separated, as long as that one person has charge of no more than two dogs for the purpose of flushing that mammal, and those dogs are clearly separated and not allowed to form a pack with the other dogs which may be in the vicinity, then that activity would be lawful. Now, if a person was using three dogs for that purpose, it would be caught by the scope of, of the bill, and that wouldn't be lawful unless they had a license to do that. So if we were to exempt rough shooting altogether, it would mean that people could continue, or not continue, they, they may decide, well, to get round the sort of two-dog limit, they will claim to be rough shooting, and they will take half a dozen dogs with them and be seeking basically to, to, to carry on the activity of okay. flushing mammals. Do you have any evidence to, to suggest that has ever happened in the past? So we've had someone with three or four dogs breaking the current regulation and using rough shooting as a, as a, as a reason? Well, I mean, we don't at present have a limit of two dogs, so there'll be no need for them to do that. OK, thank you. Uh, Beatrice Wishart. This is quite complex with the... Um with the number of, uh, you know, if you've got multiple people involved in a shoot and they've got a maximum of two dogs each, um, does it matter if the dog is the shooter's own dog? And does it matter if the gun shoots quarry flushed by their dog? Uh, I think ownership of the dog isn't important. It's who's, who, who's sort of in, in control of the dogs for, for that activity. Now, if you had a situation, however, where uh, a person A has two dogs working for them ahead of them, uh, and their two dogs flush a rabbit, say a mammal, uh, and it's shot by person B because the rabbit runs across the line, and that other person B also has a dog or dogs, now, potentially, yes, that... that falls foul of the regulation of the proposed uh, provisions of the bill. Because that, that be person who shot the dog, shot the, shot the rabbit rather, would have had more than two dogs working for them. They'd have had their own two plus the other ones which had, had flushed the... So even if they were spread out in the line and it was person B's dog that... Person B who shot the mammal that's been flushed by person A's dog, that that would be a problem? Yes. I could maybe uh, come in and explain why that's a problem, just because of the legislation. So section 1.4 of um, the bill defines what um, it means for a person to be using a dog for the purposes of the provisions. And for the bill, a person is using a dog when the hunting of a wild mammal by that person involves a dog, even if that dog isn't under that person's control. So, as you said, person A's dogs might not be under person B's control, but for the purposes of the hunting activity, he's still deemed as using those two dogs, so it be four dogs in total in that scenario. OK, and if there was five people, say, and two of them own three dogs each, can the total of six dogs be split amongst the five people? Yes. Yeah. Um, my understanding with speaking to rough shooters is sometimes if somebody doesn't have a dog of their own and somebody who has um, several dogs would loan them a dog. So um, as long as it's no more than um, two dogs um, per activity. Thanks. But that would only be done to get round the law. Because I, I don't know of anybody who goes shooting who doesn't have a dog who says to a beater or a dog handler, I'll have your dog today. So it's, that is a loophole. That is a way of getting around the law that one person can't have any more than two dogs. Um, generally, rough shoot, you have beaters and you have people who have dogs, and the people with dogs don't tend to have the guns. They're not in charge of the dogs. It's the beaters or the, the people there to flush the animals that are in charge of the dogs. And in and, and a lot of cases, um, you'll get people going to shoot who don't have dogs. But you're suggesting that if someone turned up, if a beater turned up with four dogs, as long as he spoke to somebody with a gun who didn't have any dogs, they could say, you can say you're responsible for these two dogs, 
and I'll say I'm responsible for these two, and that would get round the law. No, because it's down to the activity, so it's the person using the dog. So I would just say that you, it doesn't have to be your personal dog. You don't have to, to own that dog. Um, but if you're using the, the dog and it's the, the person using the dog in the activity, so if you are directing two dogs to flush a wild mammal, then that's, you know, that is the activity that, that you're doing. But that dog that you are directing and using in that activity doesn't have to belong to you. Um, but somebody couldn't have four dogs under their direction and be within the parameters of the bill. Can I just clarify this? Because I think that you've contradicted what you said to Beatrice Wishart. Because if, if my understanding before, it was said that if two people had two dogs each and the, the four dogs were fl uh, fl fl flushing and um, stalking, um, stalking and flushing, then um, person B shot um, something that the other person's dogs had uh, flushed and stalked, then that would be an offence. And then, Ms Fitzgerald, you said something opposite to that. <clears throat> no, what we're saying is that at a rough shoot, you may have several people there with um, several dogs. Um, and the activity, as um, Amy said, is if you are using the dogs to, to flush a wild mammal. Um, so it could be if you're using two dogs to, to flush a wild mammal and then the person next to you is using two dogs to, to flush a wild mammal and those mammals are then flushed in your direction, then potentially it could be deemed that um, all of those four dogs were then involved in that one activity because they were flushing the same um, game towards the same person. So that's why it's kind of it's done down by the activity and why it's then incumbent upon anybody undertaking um, any of the things under the bill to kind of make sure that it is that separation, that it's that person, that activity, that two dogs paired the activity, and the activity is flushing the particular wild mammal. Right, so it was your intention to restrict rush shooting through the scope of the bill? No, our, the intention for, of this bill was to regulate the use of dogs, be that um, in rough shooting, deer stalking, um, predator control. Um, so you've got the bill sets out the purposes for which dogs can be used, which is you know, section three, protection of agriculture, or section six, game shooting. It then sets out the activity, which is the use of dogs to flush a wild mammal, and then it sets out the parameters and the conditions under which that activity has to be done, and that, for example, the dogs have to be under control and they can't form a pack. So it, it sets it out, and all of the activities where dogs are used then fall within the scope of the bill. Um, but so you're not worried because you've, you, you've looked into rough shooting, you understand what it is, you've Googled it, you've watched YouTube videos, um, and you understand that working dogs are under control in those types of shoots, so therefore you're not really worried about it. We understand that they should be under control. Um, any dogs in the countryside should be under control. Okay, uh, Alistair Allen. Um, thank you, Convener. Um, we've talked a little um, today, and we've asked a little today about the, the question of whether exemptions around rough shooting uh, might, be, might have been workable. Um, we've had in our additional call for evidence um, comment from the Scottish Animal Welfare Commission. In the, Scot in the Commission's view, extending the Bill's provisions further um, to accommodate other forms of rough shooting is undesirable and unnecessary to do so would seriously risk undermining both the legislation's purpose and enforcement. I, I just wonder, were these questions that the, the government considered, that, that taking exemptions around rough shooting any further would undermine other parts of the bill or principles of the bill? Well, I mean, we're not changing the bill. No, I mean, when the bill was drafted, were you, did you, did you, did, did the government consider that um, try attempting to to, to make further allowances around rough shooting would actually undermine parts of the bill? Was that an issue that you, you considered? Well, I think it, I don't think we considered that specifically at that point. Um, but I mean, our intention was, as Leah has said, to, to treat any all, all use of dogs to, to flush wild mammals equally, so that the provisions would apply to them equally. 
Uh, and I think, you know, as there were a number of concerns raised about rough shooting, and I think that the more we thought about it and analysed what seemed to us to happen on most rough shoots, we thought that a lot of the activities that happen on rough shoots would probably be okay under the bill. I mean, clearly, all, anything to do with shooting of wild birds, not, not within the scope of the bill at all, but the shooting of wild mammals, provided they were done in the sort of terms which we've set out, where there are no more than two dogs providing quarry for a shooter, uh, and that those two dogs were not allowed to join up and form a pack with other dogs, and there was no need to, to think about any further exemptions. Thank you. Hey, Mercedes. Thank you. Um, two follow-up questions in relation to um, number of people, number of dogs on a shoot. Um, so, firstly, actually, it's something that the convener said about uh, on a rough shoot, um, dogs typically or may be um, managed by beaters or people who aren't shooting. So, is that um, a practice that you accept as part of a rough shoot? Um, well, I, I, I was slightly surprised to hear the convener <coughs> describe that as rough shooting. I mean, to, to me, that sounds like driven pheasant shooting or, or partridge shooting, perhaps. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that you know it, it, the situation there is is going to be more complicated okay. if there are a number of beaters with a number of dogs and they are driving. Uh, or flushing mammals, and then they're being shot by other people. And I think that that would not likely be within the, the scope, of the, and it would not likely be lawful under the bill. Okay. So, in the circumstance where you have dogs managed by the shooters, I, as I understand from from Miss Fitzgerald's response to Beatrice Wishart. Um, Shooting dogs flushed by sorry, <laughs> shooting wild mammals which have been flushed by someone else's dogs, dog or dogs would be an offence. But that the shooter's dog doesn't have to be their personal dog. So, at what point during the shoot does that need to be decided? I guess this is maybe going to come up in enforcement, but it it strikes me that someone could very easily say, um, actually, that's, that's my dog for the purposes of this shoot, and could, it could just be changed well, to suit. Go on, yeah. no, I was just going to say, I think it, just, it comes back to the activity. <clears throat> so if you are shooting quarry, then no more than two dogs can be used to, um, in that particular activity. So. Um, you will have different permutations and, and, and different groups of people, um, but ultimately um, it's the number of dogs that were involved in that activity. So if um, you're shooting game and it's only been flushed by two dogs, then that is permitted. But if four dogs have flushed that game, then that wouldn't be permitted because that would be using more than four dogs for that activity. So, But could you have a sort of relay flushing? One dog flushing to another dog to another dog, finally to the to the shooter. How would you keep track of that mammal and know that it had only been flushed, it had only come into contact by two dogs and that those two dogs were... I, I don't know if that's... That's when it's in on the, the onus of the people who are undertaking that activity, if they're undertaking that activity in proximity to other people. So, and that doesn't just apply to rough shooting. It applies to, for example, you know, forest rangers who are controlling deer or other uses of dogs, then they need to, you know, organise themselves and conduct themselves in in a way that um, those um, issues or areas of confusion shouldn't arise. If, if I could come just again come back to that section one four point, I think no one would be able to say that oh they weren't my dogs. It's if they've been flushed, if the wild mammals have been flushed by dogs and you are also using dogs, then you will fall within the scope. However, if the shooter isn't using any other dogs, then there is not going to be an offence. There will only be an offence if more than two dogs have been have been used. That sounds slightly different to what Leah was saying. I, I understood that it was you said it was I understand it's related to the activity. So if you shoot 
a wild mammal and it's only been flushed to you by no more than two dogs, that wouldn't be an offence. But I understand from what you're saying, Amy, that um, if you yourself had brought dogs and then it was other dogs <clears throat> that, that flushed the mammal to you, then that would be an offence. No, sorry. OK. <laughs> I think the question was um, initially to do with if, if a shooter was, it didn't have dogs, would that still be an offence? So the key thing is section 1.4, the definition of a person using a dog. An offence will only be committed by the shooter if that shooter is also using dogs. So if the shooter is alongside someone who is using two dogs to flush, then there's nothing, nothing stopping that shooter taking the shot because they are not using any other dogs. They would be part of that one, as, as Leah said, that activity, the, the activity of searching for or flushing a wild mammal from cover. And they would be separate, separate the, quarry, a separate activity. But this is just not how rough shooting works in practice. Not, not at all. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I certainly, what I described was far from a driven shoot uh, in terms of, and I think you were suggesting it was like grouse shooting or, or fox shooting. That's not the case. Uh, I should declare an interest. I've taken part in rough shoots. I don't have a dog that um, flushed animals. I would stand and shoot. So it's not always the case that the shooter is in control of the dogs. What often happens is that you have... Um, four or five people who maybe beat, so they're there with the dogs to flush, uh, and that's their day out, that's what they do. And you might have two or three guns that don't have any ownership uh, or responsibility for those dogs that will take part. So uh, in that instance, who, who is illegally hunting? Is it the guy with the gun or the, the beaters with the dogs? This is, this is where there's a grey area, but certainly I wasn't suggesting it was a, a, a driven shoot. It's rough shoot in a way. It could be described as a driven shoot when you have beaters working a wood with dogs, and those dogs may have no ownership or responsibility uh, on, on behalf of the, those who are shooting. Just to get clarity, have you made a distinction between a driven shoot and a rough shoot for the purposes of the bill? Are the two of them are tied into the same thing. So a driven shoot is, in, is exactly the same as a rough shoot for the purposes of the bill. OK. That's not what you suggested just in response to Mercedes. You suggested that a driven shoot would, would come under the bill uh, in a different way from a rough shoot. Or I maybe must but, uh, understood. It, 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 so it's not the type of shooting that's relevant, really. It's the actual activity. So if a shooter, if someone shoots a mammal that's been flushed by one or two dogs, then that's no, there's no problem with that. If they shoot a mammal which has been flushed by more than two dogs, then that is unlawful unless they have a licence. Well, that's, well, that goes in the face of what the, the minister has said. Um, if there's four people there, with eight dogs, does that mean you have to have four guns, each shooting only the animals that those two dogs had flushed? Because again, you could have eight dogs with four handlers and two shooters. Does that make it illegal? Because what you've suggested, it would do. And if that's the case, that would make rough shooting illegal. Because that's what happens in most cases. Well, I mean, I. Yes. Okay. That, uh, it, it, the, the issue is is no more than two dogs to flush a mammal for someone to shoot. Now, if you have a group of shooters and they have uh, more than two dogs flushing mammals for them, then yes, that is 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 unlawful under the bill. Okay. Uh, I, 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 as I said at the outset, we are aware that. Rough shooting is a broad term and encompasses quite a range of activities. The sort of activity that you're describing, Convener, I think would, is one of those which would not be lawful under the bill as regards shooting of mammals. Well, clearly, I mean, shooting of, of, of wild birds would be a different matter. Yeah, it, it, it seems to be in direct 
uh, contrast to what the, the Minister said in response to the Stage 1? Because she said that as long as pe people were only in charge of two dogs, it didn't have any relation, uh, bear any relationship to the number of shooters. So we'll, we'll maybe come back to that with enforcement. More clarification. So do you need a licence to rough shoot so you don't get caught up in what you're talking about there? And, and my other question was, if you're in cover, if your dogs are in cover, how do you know which one has um, flushed? So I don't have the, the Minister's words in front of me, but um, I think what, what she was saying was what we said here, that it is related to the activity. So you can have several people present at a rough shoot, but they are regarded as doing um, separate activities. So it's that activity, the, the two dogs, and that was um, what the Minister was saying, which was um, the same as what we've been saying today. So it depends how the rough shoot is is conducted. Um, so it's not to say that rough shooting can't happen under the bill. We're just setting out the parameters for which the use of dogs, you, as the bill is currently um, structured, um, there isn't a licence for um, Section 6, so um, rough shooting um, is limited to two dogs. You couldn't apply for a, a licence um, to do any of the activities under that section. But from what you're saying, it looks as though um, the government haven't considered that rough shooters need a licence to go out with two dogs because they go out with a friend, because it's very rare that somebody would go out on their own unless, of course, they were a farmer just going out to shoot a fox. They can go out um, in a group, um, but then they just need to make sure that they're only shooting and flushing um, the, the quarry, so they are acting separately. They're not you know, working together. They're not having their dogs yeah, um, so, flush together. So how do you know if you're in cover which dog has flushed? That's something that you just need to determine. And no, I'm up. sorry. If, you're, if anyone's watching this right now, this is complete mess. This is completely confusing. I don't understand what's going on. I've watched a rough shoot and many people around this table have as well. And I cannot understand this part, this section six. It is not clear, and I, I am sorry to say that. Thank you. Um, we're, we're going to move on, but I just wanted to, the, the minister uh, quoted, and I quote, the two dog limit does not necessarily mean that not more than two dogs can be present at a rough shoot. And we understand that. But she then goes on to state that the bill would apply to each individual person using dogs to hunt quarry as part of a rough shoot where wild mammals or rabbits were, were uh, shot. Does that apply to shooters or those who are in control and own the dogs that are flushing? Who are the hunters? Does, does the term hunter only apply to the person that shoots the wild animal, mammal, or does it apply to those who are in control of the, the dogs? That's what... Uh, it makes it completely unclear. And the difficulty is, this is all just, this is not within the legislation. This is not in the face of the bill. This would need to come forward as guidance, um, which, from what we've heard this, mo this morning, if the guidance is based on what we've heard, it's going to be incredibly confusing. It applies to the person using the dogs. That's how the, the bill is structured. So um, the person who is deemed to be the person using the dogs and undertaking the activity, that is who the bill applies to. Uh, yeah. When you talk about the person who is using the dog, there's actually two people using the dog if you are if you've got a shooter and a picker upper. So the person who's walking with the dogs that flushes the game, whatever it happens to be, if it's somebody else that shoots it, that means it's two people who are using the dog. Yes. So they're both responsible for the dog's actions? So they would both be deemed to be taking part in that activity? OK. OK, Jenny Minto. Thank you, convener. Um, <clears throat> we took some additional evidence um, prior to this, um, e this evidence session. Um, the League Against Cruel Sports stated that the proposed legislation is very clear. Rough shooting remains legal under the bill, provided each person in attendance controls more than two dogs, and the dogs don't form a pack. I'm wondering, um, just for the record, if you can give us the definition of a pack, 
um, and also as opposed to when um, several dogs are working independently. So when we don't have a specific definition um, for a term under the bill, then it's just, um, we just rely on the ordinary de dictionary definition. Can, can you give me the dictionary definition for the record of a pack, please? And perhaps while we're waiting, if we could get an indication as to what's the difference between the dogs working independently. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm just looking that up now. Um, I think we normally use the, the Oxford English Dictionary is the one that we normally use. But, um, come back on, on, on that point, but just to, to add as well that, um, again, looking at um, subsection C of, of section 2, um, that's our condition where it says reasonable steps are taken to ensure that any dog used in the activity does not join with others to form a pack of more than two dogs. So for the purpose of the bill, a pack will be more than two dogs. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, we're now going to move on to uh, enforcement uh, and, and loopholes. Oh. Okay, Something's Jim. Sorry to labour this point. Um, if you're talking about the definition of working in a pack, um, if there are four people with eight dogs and each of those four people has two dogs each and each of them can call back individually any dog that is within that area, would that be regarded as a pack or would that be regarded as four people working independently? Does that make sense? And I'm, let me put this in context of a shoot. So if there are guys walking, whether they've got guns in their hands or not, whether they're walking with the purpose of flushing prey, while they're walking, those eight dogs will be working the ground. They, they, it's called quartering. So they'll be quartering a particular bit of ground. They will cross over each other and then they'll cross back again. So if at any time a dog flushes anything that runs, if that owner of that dog or the person who is working that dog whistles and that dog stops to allow the prey to run, is that deemed to be that dog working individually to the owner or is that dog working in a pack when there are eight dogs on the ground at the same time? This is really important. I think it's, it, it, if, if in effect then whoever shoots the, the, the prey has got more than two dogs working for them, and that is not lawful under the bill. So, I mean, it, the situation you describe, it seems to me that that person would, in effect, have eight dogs working for them. No. Well, it would seem that all of the people... I mean, it, but if they don't, if they don't have eight dogs working for them, if they just have two dogs working for them, two dogs flushing prey for them to shoot, that's lawful. OK. You've got the eight dogs that are working, all on the same bit of ground, but one person takes a shot, and whoever it is that's controlling these dogs, you'll have seen it. If the dog, the dog flushes something, whoever's handling the dog whistles to that dog, and that dog stops and pushes the prey forward. One person shoots it. Is that deemed to be these dogs are working in a pack? despite the fact that each individual who's got these dogs in front of them can stop them at any given time. Because if, if the, so allow me to clarify what it is that I'm meaning. If you're working a pack of dogs and you're flushing foxes, you have to stop the whole pack in order to stop the hunt. Yeah. Whereas when you're quartering, you only need the one dog who's pushed that prey forward to stop in order to get the clean shot. Mm -hmm. So there's a clear difference and how these dogs are actually worked on the ground. Can the law, or can the bill, as it's drafted currently, allow for that differentiation? No, I mean, the, 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 the legislation is structured around the number of dogs. No more than two dogs to be used to, to flush. So That's if, going to come on to enforcement, if, if, if so If a I'll... person, in the scenario you describe, it seems to me you could not say they were just using two dogs because they could be shooting game flushed by any of the eight dogs. OK, but then that, that, will, that, come on, that will come on to enforcement that the convener is going to come on to, so I'll leave it there. 
Thank you. Um, so, quite simply, under the terms of the bill, how does the bill set out to differentiate between legal rough shooting with more than two dogs um, and illegal hunting with more than two dogs? Where in the bill does it make that clarification? Well, it's, uh, I mean, as, as we've described, it's under the, the, where it describes what the activity is, the person using more than two dogs to flush a mammal. That, that is unlawful. Using one or two dogs to flush a mammal is lawful. I mean, it's, that, that's really what it all boils down to. So, again, I suppose in the back, uh, Jim, if there's, if there's uh, two um, beaters, as we call them, or dog handlers, with two dogs each and one gun, would that be illegal? The person would be, who was doing the shooting would be having more than two dogs flushing the game for them, yes. OK. Um, yeah, I, I, also, sorry, sorry, things keep popping into my head. Are we not getting concerned here about, is the purpose of the bill not to stop dogs chasing and killing the animal? So is there any way to make differentiation between the dogs chasing and killing the animal between the number of dogs that are flushing the animal to be shot. Is there, is there not a way of clarifying that? Well, the bill, as it's structured, says that hunting involves a number of different types of activities, and amongst those activities are flushing and searching, as well as chasing. Killing. OK. Yes, Mercedes. Thanks. Just to follow up on Jim's question, so I understand that a motivator of this bill was to address animal welfare concerns. So how, how is it that multiple sets of one or two dogs flushing to guns leads to higher animal welfare outcomes than a single pack of more than two dogs flushing to guns? It's about the number of dogs. It's, we think that uh, there is a higher risk of uh, more than two dogs. But you might chasing, have... catching and killing a mammal than where there are just two dogs. I mean, that, that is why the two-dog limit has been introduced. But you might have, on a rough shoot, five sets of one or two dogs flushing in close proximity to each other. And if a fox or a wild mammal is, is in that area, how is, how is that going to be... How is, how is that going to lead to higher animal welfare than if you had the same number of dogs working as a pack? Well, I guess this is where we talk about there needs to be clear separation. So, I mean, if, in effect, we are talking about those dogs forming a pack, then that's not lawful. So we're saying what is lawful is to have up to two dogs providing quarry for someone to shoot and those dogs being having clear separation with other dogs who may be working in the vicinity. If, if it, you, what you're saying is, in effect, there are five dogs flushing a mammal, then that's not awful. I've got to pick up on, on something you said. It was something the Minister also said, which, again, would, would kind of evidence the lack of understanding of a rough shoot, and that is chasing, catching and killing a wild mammal. I had no, no occasion that that would be the case during a rough shoot. And in fact, the dogs that are involved in a rough shoot are highly trained. And if I was to go to a rough shoot and, and my dog was found to be chasing, catching and killing, I'd be asked to leave and I wouldn't be asked back. Um, the dogs just don't do that. So the idea that any time during a rough shoot, a dog would chase, catch and kill an animal, I, I would like to see some evidence of, of that happening. Uh, and if that's the basis why rough shoot is including that, it's on, on it's a false basis. Um, Alistair Allen. Thank you, Convener. Um, thank you, Convener. Um, uh, my question was, was really about the comments that have been um, made by Police Scotland about enforceability. Um, and you'll be familiar with what was are there around um, uh, the, the issue we've just discussed around what constitutes a pack, um, but also other enforcement issues. They did say that they felt that the, the most people, I think was their word, would obey the law. I just wonder if, if the comments that they've made are, are ones that um, will be considered, for instance, when um, uh, guidance or, or licensing schemes are, are being formulated. 
Yeah, so we had spoken to Police Scotland um, throughout the development of um, this bill. That was the first time we'd seen those particular concerns raised. So as we did when they, they raised concerns about the training of police dogs, um, we will take that away and we will speak to Police Scotland and um, understand where, where their concerns are and um, consider whether there's anything um, we need to do to address those. Thank you, Convener. Can I ask, had you had discussions with Police Scotland around rough shooting prior to uh, the evidence the Minister gave when, when the concerns were raised? Not specifically into, in relation to rough shooting, but we had had discussions with Police Scotland about the bill in general and then follow-up discussions about the impact of the bill on the training of police dogs. Okay, so, so given the concerns of Police Scotland, has the, the, the Minister considered any amendments to address Police Scotland's concerns? The Minister is in um, Egypt at the moment, so I don't think she's seen the concern raised by Police Scotland. But as I said, we will um, take that forward as a, as a bill team. Okay, thank you. Um, Karen Adam. Thank you, Convener. Um, we've spoken a, a bit about loopholes, and <clears throat> um, we know that that is the, the purpose for this bill coming forward as well, is to close some, some of those loopholes that have been quite apparent. Um, a few stakeholders have been vocal um, you know, fr from all sides of the, the debate and the argument and how that um, any exemptions for, for rough shooting would create uh, potential loopholes. And I'm just wondering, in, in that regard, um, you know, what considerations have been made for that? I know we've had a, a discussion on that already this morning, but is there anything in specific yourself that you could you could see that you, you could let us know what you have considered and, uh, and um, you know, um, um, put that into the bill. So that's why the bill is structured the way it is. So we did consider that people would try and use any of the activities um, under the bill as a potential um, avenue for illegal hunting. So that's why we have the two-dog limit. <coughs> that's why we have the... Um, setting out that it's the activity and that the activity cannot involve the use of more than two dogs, that the dogs have to be under control, that they can't form a pack. And it's basically to yeah, stop people um, turning up and um, claiming that they're all just there separately, when in reality, you know, they are hunting with a pack of dogs. Yeah, and uh, thank you for that. And I think, you know, what we're discussing here today um, and really drilling down into the detail and narrative of particular situations which may or may not happen and I know the, the convener talking about his, about his experience in rough shoots and if he had a dog that went out of control you know he'd be asked back because mostly these rough shoots are coordinated and organized in uh, you know the most legal um, ways possible so um, you know in, in that regard I, do, I don't think we would have that many issues there um, so it really does come down to <clears throat> the enforcement of it would you say? I think most people are, are law-abiding and most mm -hmm. people um, are seeking to do things in, in the correct way, whether <clears throat> they're rough shooting or whether they're going out and um, carrying out predator control. But we know that that's not always the case, that um, wild mammals are, whether accidentally or um, deliberately, being um, chased and killed. And that is what that bill is seeking to address. And I think it's very clear um, to us that there are uh, vast variety of uses to which dogs are um, put into, into the countryside um, and they all fall within the, um, of this bill if they're used to control wild mammals. So we've just thought to have that kind of clear um, you know, setting out of if you are using dogs for these purposes, this is um, how you have to conduct yourself. Thank you. And if I, if I may, Convener, just one last question. Um, you know, as somebody who's sitting here scrutinising this bill um, and going over it, I just, you know, I, I have to be aware that the priority of this bill is animal welfare, above and beyond everything else. Above human activities, it is about animal welfare. Yeah. Rachel Hamilton. Um, thank you, Convener. What activities can you list that people use rough shooting as a cover for, as you've just suggested? Um, we're not saying that um, people will are using rough shooting or anything. We're saying that the potential is that people will seek to use activities as a cover. We know, for example, from the evidence in 
England and Wales that um, when they introduced the two dog limit, then people used um, activities like trail hunting um, as a cover. Um, for but trail, we, trail hunting doesn't happen in Scotland? Not at the moment because we don't have a two dog limit. So what's the similarities between trail hunting and rough shooting? They're different activities. We're just saying that any So how could you get away with pretending that you're rough shooting if you're trail hunting? People are not pretending. I don't no, 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 you've just be... said you could use rough shooting. Um, your words weren't as a cover for, but that's what you're suggesting. So therefore, are you saying that people will pretend that they're rough shooting, but they're trail hunting? No, we're trying to prevent people using any of the purposes as a cover for illegal hunting. And whether how would that's they do that? Shooting or controlling it. By saying I'm going out rough shooting and so what is the similarities between trail hunting and rough shooting that you could say to a policeman who arrives I, I am I am rough shooting I could go out and say I'm rough shooting I could have a pack of dogs with me and I could let that pack of dogs chase and kill a wild mammal and claim that I was rough shooting so you're saying that rough sh shooters would look like trail hunters no, I'm not saying that rough shooters would look like trail hunters or anybody else. I'm saying somebody could claim to be a rough shooter because they are out there, they are shooting. A person who is going out rough shooting with intention of rough shooting will, as we have all talked about, um, conduct themselves in such a way that they will ensure that the prey is shot. But somebody turning up in the countryside with a pack of dogs seeking to be legal hunting could claim that they were rough shooting, and the difference would be that they would not be um, conducting themselves in a way that was not allowing the mammal to be killed. They would you know, be there, and they could potentially just let the dogs kill the wild mammal. That's and, and do you use the same um, types of dogs for trail hunting as rough shooting? You, the, you can use whatever So could you use hounds, for example, to go out rough shooting? Scent dogs? Or would you use spaniels to go trail hunting? You can use whatever dogs that you think are going to be serve your purposes best for that the activity. Okay, that's that's interesting. Thank you. Um, just you know, we've heard that the bill and and you know, stage one, uh, the bill was uh, voted unanimously going through on the basis that it was to improve animal welfare and and while still continuing to allow um, dogs as, uh, to control predators. <laughs> Um, throughout the, the weeks and months that we've taken evidence, not once did we have any issues around animal welfare uh, and rough shooting. Not, not one piece of evidence, I, I believe, came before this committee. It, um, I think this is an unintended consequence of including rabbits in the definition of wild mammals, which has had a knock-on effect on, on rough shooting. Uh, and, and given the, the the response we had to our additional call for evidence. There is concerns out there that Sex and Sex in particular uh, doesn't uh, fit the bill for either those who wish to continue rough shooting or those who would wish to see any sort of country sports stopped. It, it does neither um, and, and could potentially open a, a loophole. On that basis, has the bill team looked at any possible amendments which would address these concerns? And that may include um, a better definition of rough shooting and excluding it, or, or any other measures that would, would clear up what looks like a bit of a, a burak at the moment? Well, of course, you know, we, we have seen amendments which have been laid, uh, and we give those careful consideration. But it's not really, I think, our job to talk here about amendments that the Minister may seek to bring forward. Um, but yes, I mean, we're very well aware of the, of the issues around this, and we are seeing the amendments which are being laid. Thank you. Uh, Mercedes, finally. Thank you. Yeah, um, I guess I'm seeking some clarification. So this, the Scottish Government's stated aim is to pursue the highest possible animal welfare standards. So can we get some kind of explanation as to why this bill has ended up having an exemption for sport and how the Scottish Government is, squares the hunting and killing of animals for sport with pursuing the highest possible animal welfare standards? Well, I think... Sorry. I, I was just going to say, I mean, uh, as, as the convener has, has reminded us, it, there, there is uh, clearly an animal welfare priority that needs to be balanced with the need for effective predator control. So that is... The, but is sporting predator control? Well, I mean, along... We're, we're not seeking, in the course of this bill, to ban an activity which is not really related... 
uh, uh, except as far as in potentially the use of, of more than two dogs, which we've already talked about, and the potential for that perhaps being used as a loophole. So really, the, we're not here seeking to ban sport shooting. We're seeking to control the use of uh, mammals to prevent them chasing and killing wild mammals. That's the, the intention of the bill. Uh, that concludes the session. I very much appreciate your, your time this morning. That's additional uh, witness session. It, it certainly will help us uh, going forward to stage two and stage three. Uh, we'll now briefly suspend the meeting until 11.15 to allow for a changeover of, of witnesses. Thank you.
Uh, welcome back to, to our morning session. Uh, following the session uh, with the, the Bill team, uh, and we've now had time to consider uh, the written submissions, do, do members wish to take further evidence uh, with stakeholders to explore some of the issues that have been raised uh, in our additional call for views? Rachel Hamilton. Thanks, Kavina. Um, I'm none the wiser after the session with the Bill team. I was grateful for their time, but I think there's a lot of questions to be answered. And from a practical point of view, there were 232 submissions to the consultation. I really, really think that we should have some sort of roundtable or stakeholder engagement just to get some clarification on the unanswered um, points that we, we didn't seem to get a grip on. OK. Mercedes. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> now that we've had an opportunity to review the written evidence that we received last week, and there was a significant amount, um, <clears throat> and I also have some um, outstanding confusion after today's session um, with the legislation team. So I think it would be beneficial to bring, as long as we have a you know a balance of of groups coming in, that it would be beneficial to have that roundtable. Okay, are members agreement to have a, a further stakeholder? Engagement session. Just, Alistair. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not against that, but just to check, you, you mentioned earlier on session, so we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, this is a stakeholder session, uh, just to, to, this is the to confirm that, yes. Right. Agreed. Agreed? Yeah. Now I'm out on a limb, you can't see me. I'm out of you. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm agreed in principle, but I, I think that um, we're none the wiser because I, I feel like we almost need, like, back to basics understanding of legal language, right? Because early, at some point, I, I feel like I need to go back and look at the official record. Because er, at some point early on, question three, they started talking about it's per activity. It's two dogs per activity. And then we're talking about shooters and, and you know, all sorts of Sorry, things. Sorry, Annie, just at the moment, we're just considering whether we want to take further evidence no, in the I, session. I, I know, but the thing is, is, is if we don't get that it is per activity and we are not clear, and then we're going to invite a whole load of other people in to, I don't know if it's going to actually make it clearer for us uh, if we are not clear after hearing from them. So, you know, I mean, I, I know that the majority is going to be like, yeah, let's do it. So it's fine. I'll go with the majority. But I don't know if it's actually going to give us what we need. OK. And we've spent a lot of time on this already. Thank you. Uh, noted. Are, are we in... Are, are, is the majority committee in favour of having a further stakeholders meeting uh, in the 23rd? Yes. OK, thank you. And my next item of business this morning is in consideration of consent notification relating to UKSI, the Organic Production Amendment No. 2, Regulation 2022. Do any members have any comments on the notification? Are members content to agree with the Scottish Government's decision to consent to the provisions set out in the notification being included in UK rather than Scottish subordinate legislation? Yeah. Agreed? Agreed? Thank you. Uh, our next item of business this morning is consideration of petition PE1758, uh, End Greyhound Racing in Scotland. Uh, members will note the Animal Welfare uh, Commission has written to us to say that it wishes to take more time to consider the issue of a ban on greyhound racing and expects to come to a decision next February. Uh, on that basis, are members content to delay further consideration until the SAWC has come to a view on, on that matter? Uh, Mercedes. Um, I think given some of the correspondence the committee has received, I would suggest that we defer a decision on what we do next until next week when we have a chance to discuss the work programme rather than taking that decision today. Okay. Rachel. The letter um, from the Scottish Animal Welfare Commission doesn't state um, when the committee will have access to the decision that they've taken to take on more research um, and consider that ev evidence. Um, so I think it's almost as if this is, the can is being kicked down the line on, on this one and unfortunately doesn't give us any clarity over the timetable that we could possibly consider it within our work programme. Uh, well, it, it, it's my understanding that they will come to decision by next February. Um, initially, I was disappointed at the, the lack of progress from the, 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 
the Commission, uh, given that we'd, we'd written on two occasions to, to get a response. However, uh, that might well uh, give us reassurance that they are taking this seriously and they're going to consider all the options and consequences of a, a ban, an outright ban or a licensing scheme. So uh, I, I think waiting to February would certainly give us the information we need to, to take it further. Ariane. Um, I, I'd be interested in uh, a letter to the Scottish Government requesting further information, including consultation timeline and the specifics of pro the proposed consultation on extending the framework for licensing of activities involving animals, including greyhound racing. I would also be interested in um, writing to the Dogs Trust, Blue Cross and RSPCA to request a, an estimated publication date of their upcoming evidence-based report. Uh, we, 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 can, we can certainly do that, um, but again, I think if we, if we deal with it on our, our work planning uh, meeting next week, we'll, we'll have a better indication of uh, the time constraints we've got and, and, and how we want to take it forward. Okay, thank you. That concludes our business in public and we'll now move into private session.